So I've been using XFCE now for a little bit over a week, and this is my second video after the switch, and there will be a few more, so I hope that these don't become too annoying. I'll try not to do one every single day, but there are going to be quite a few XFCE videos over the next couple months, so just prepare for that. But today what I want to talk about are five of the favorite features that I've discovered so far now. Now I've made a video in the past talking about how XFCE is my favorite desktop environment, but that was always for other people, right? I was a window manager user for the longest period of time, and while I always liked XFCE, I thought it was the true best desktop environment out there. It wasn't something that I was really interested in using all that much for a long period of time. Not because XFC was bad, but because i3 and DWM and whatever was so good and fit my workflow so well. But a week ago, I decided to switch to XFCE. I don't even know if that I had any good reasons at the time. I don't really remember. The last week has been kind of crazy, so my memory is shot. But the point is, is I've switched. I've been messing around with it. I've been using it full time on my main machine, as you can see right here. You know, this is my XFC desktop as we are right now. I've been ricing it like crazy. I'm, I've been having quite a bit of fun doing so. And, you know, it's been a good experience for the most part. Now, if you want to hear some of the negative things that I have to say about it, I've, I've put those thoughts on Patreon for now. I will be making videos about some of the bad things later on, but for now, that's where those thoughts are stored in my Patreon exclusive podcast. But for now, I just want to talk about some of the good things. So the first thing that I really, really like is that it's fast. So this is the most superfluous reason that I have on the list. We're going to start off with that. And honestly, all I can say about it is that it's really, really quick. Applications start up really, really fast. There's no bogging down. And it just is very speedy. I can't really say anything more about that. I don't have any like, hard and firm numbers. And obviously, when I use a window manager... I can't say that any of those things were slow. Those were also fast. But way back when, when I was a desktop environment user, I remember them being pretty sluggish, especially compared to tiling window managers. XFC doesn't have that problem at all. It's very, very speedy. Now, I have a ton of resources on this machine. I have 64 gigabytes of RAM and, you know, a fast CPU and an SSD and all that stuff. So in terms of resources, I can't tell you if it's like really low on resources Despite the fact that I know that it is, it doesn't really matter to me. I just know from you know an experience, a use case scenario, XFCE is very fast. So that's the first thing. So the second thing that I want to talk about is also maybe not all that important to everyone, but for me it is, and that is Clipman down here. Now I'm not going to open Clipman because it might have some sensitive information in there. I'm not sure what I've copied and pasted, pasted recently, but basically what Clipman is is it's a clipboard manager similar to like clipman ud or something like that and what it does is basically what you think it would do it manages the history of your clipboard so anything that you've copied and pasted or just copied shows up in your history and you can go back to it if you need to personally i find a clipboard manager to be essential simply because there are often times when i have to when i have to copy multiple things and instead of having to copy one thing go paste it where it needs to go go copy another thing paste it in the same place, go back and forth, back and forth. I can copy everything while I'm on that one page and then go to the place where they all need to be pasted and then select them from Clipman. Now, it's not as good, I don't think, as Clip Menu D simply because it's not built into Rofi. I'd prefer it to be built into Rofi, but if I wanted to use Clip Menu D, I could still do that. But the fact that Clipman is built into XFC is really, really cool. So the next feature is one that I don't think that a lot of people would use, but I've found myself using it a lot. So I'm used to being very, very organized when it comes to my windows because I use a tiling window manager by default usually, and that manages my windows in a certain way that I'm very comfortable with. But with a floating window manager, or in this case a desktop environment, my windows get all over the damn place and it drives my OCD just absolutely nuts. Now there are obviously ways of working around this that I'm still messing around with, but one of the things that I found so cool about XFC is the roll-up feature. And basically what the roll-up feature does is it allows you to roll the window up. So if you hit this little button here, it's the up arrow, it turns the application into just the, t the title bar. That's all that's left of it, and you can just move that around, and it's so much easier. So if you have multiple things, so let's just get OBS over here, 
and I roll that up, hopefully this doesn't stop the recording, you know, it just looks like this, and I can stack them so simply, and it's just very nice. Uh, now, I do will say that it's really easy to lose things like this, so I end up having to alt-tab to find things sometimes if I have, you know, multiple things rolled up. But if I have several windows open on a desktop at once, and I don't need one of them right away, but I know that I'll need it later, I roll it up, and I don't have to deal with it in the way. It just, it just lies there until I need it again. And it's just so useful, and I'm probably going to miss it if I go back to a tiling window manager later on. Uh, I know that there are, like, you can, like, minimize windows on certain window managers, so maybe that's an option. But this isn't, like, minimized, because it's still there, it's still visible, you still know that it, it's easy to find. But, I don't know, I just find it really, really useful. So that's the roll-up feature, and like I said, I'm really, really excited about that one. That's the one that I've been using a lot. So the next one that I want to talk about is the panel. Now, if you've watched any of my videos in the past, you'll know that I spend a lot of time customizing my bar in a window manager. I tend to spend a lot of time doing that, and it's something that I enjoy doing, and I consider a bar very important. The XFC panel is spectacular. It's one of the best bars panels out there, and I like it because it's very, very customizable. So it comes with a ton of items. I, they, I believe they call them applets, but they also call them items. So whatever they're called. And there are many more items or applets available online if you search for them. But basically, you can put anything you want in the bar. You can style the bar however you want. And because a lot of this stuff is done through CSS and XML, if, you, if there's not a built-in settings panel for it, or a built-in setting toggle for it, I should say, you could do all that stuff in CSS or XML if you knew how to do so. So that's really cool about the bar. And like I said, because it's so extensible, you can basically do anything you want with it. You can put it, you know, on the top or the bottom. It can go on the left or the right. You can make it with rounded corners like I have, which is really cool. You can add transparency without a compositor, or at least without an extra compositor. There's just so much you can do with it, and it's one of the reasons why I think the XFC4 panel is one of the most used panels out there, even for people who use window managers, simply because there's just so much you can do with it. And on top of that, of course, you get the whisker menu if you install it, and the whisker menu is fantastic. It's very customizable, very easy to navigate, so you can you know, go into different categories and stuff like that in the way that I have it set up with the icons along the bottom, and it just works really, really well. Now, I don't find myself using the whisker menu all that often. I end up using just using Rofi because I'm used to Rofi, but every once in a while I'll open up the whisker menu and search from there. So I find the panel to be spectacular and I've spent quite a bit of time getting it to look exactly the way I want it to look and it's really really nice. Now I will say that I'm still messing around with the CLI aspects of it. So there are certain commands you can do in the terminal to manipulate the book, the panel, including restart it. So theoretically, because everything is done in a config configuration file, like I'll talk about here in a minute, you could theoretically easy cha easily change themes and colors and settings and applets and all that stuff from a script. Now, like I said, I haven't got there yet, and I haven't explored it yet, but theoretically that's possible, and that kind of makes me really excited because I, li I like to script different rices, and that has some serious potential there, so I'm really looking forward to getting into that. So I've already mentioned it, but the fifth one on the list is configuration files. So if I open up a terminal here, every setting that XFC has, as far as I can tell, is right here in one directory. Now... This is good for two reasons. First, it makes customizing XFCE very interesting because not only can you open up the settings panel and manage XFCE through there, you can also edit XFCE through the configuration files. And if you've ever used a tiling window manager before, maybe you're more comfortable doing it that way. Now, if you are familiar with XML, you'll have a better time doing all that stuff than if you are not familiar with XML. I'm not familiar with XML, so it's a little, it's been a little bit tricky, but it's just another thing to learn. And because there's that option, it enables you to do a whole bunch more than if you were to just stick to the settings panel. Uh, or at least it allows you to do things in a different way, I should say at least. 
the other thing, the other reason why this is cool is because theoretically you could take this file and put it on another instance of XFC, say on another computer, and you'd have all of your settings. Now, other desktop environments can sort of do this, but they store their stuff all over the place. And that means that you have to have every single piece of the thing that it stores in order to get the proper settings and stuff like that as you might want. And even then, you're probably going to miss something and things are going to break. It's not quite easy to transfer from place to place. XFC, everything's right here. And that means that you can take this and put them on, on another machine and it just should work very, very easily. Now, obviously, that's going to depend on having all the dependencies and stuff that you need. So if you install an applet or something to your bar that isn't there by default, you'd have to make sure that's installed before you get set up and whatever. You don't want things to break that way. But still, having all that stuff in one place means that XFC is maybe the most transferable desktop environment that, ex that exists. It's very, very cool. So those are the five things that I found so far that I really, really, truly like about XFC. I have to say that I've been really enjoying my time here. There have been some negatives, like I've talked about earlier, and you, you know where to find all that stuff. But I will just say that overall, as a broadening Horizons experience, Horizon broadening experience, I, I'm having a hard time talking today. I, I, it's been a very good experience so far. It's, it's been something that, you know, I've had fun customizing. I've had fun setting up all the key bindings that I need because I really, truly do like managing my workflow with key bindings so i've set up a ton of key bindings which is nice you know so it's been a very good experience to set all this stuff up and i've had fun and i haven't found anything that has been deal breaking like there's nothing even the whole monitors not going turning off thing which i still haven't solved isn't a deal breaker for me i've just worked around it uh, and honestly that's the only thing that has come close now i've had some fedora issues but that's a that's for another video so that's it for this one. If you have cool things that you really like about XFC, I'd love to hear about them in the, the comments below. You can follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast. Links for Libera Pay and YouTube will be in the video description. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing. I truly do appreciate it. You guys are all, like I said, absolutely amazing. And this cold is just messing with my mind. I can't... <laughs> I can't remember what I just said half the time, so I'm just repeating myself over and over again. But anyways, thanks everybody for your support. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.